the Santal Rebellion of 1855. The Sandal Rebellion of 1855 was a historic event. Every year on June 30th, this event is commemorated by the tribals in Jharkhand. The Sandals call this revolution Hul, meaning uprising. The Hul started on June 30th in 1855 in eastern India a few steps prior to this event will put the whole thing in the right perspective authentic historical records show that the sandal adivasis were a migratory tribe they belonged to the munda clan the mundas occupy central and eastern india the sandals are mostly concentrated in the present day sandal parganas north eastern portion of jharkhand state the area garlanded with the 100 mile long rajmahal hill range was already the abode of the malto hill tribe a faction of the rounds in chotanagpur in the state of jharkhand already around 300 bc greek historian megasthenes makes a mention of this malto tribe occupying the rajmahal hill range and the plateau he authored indica an account of india in four books during their migratory exploration for convenient settlements the sandals eyed the rajmahal hill range and the plateau the verdant hill range with its vast forested area and the sprawling countryside fired their imagination and could not resist their attempt to enter the area that was a time when the british were facing stiff opposition from the malto tribe which resisted the white sahibs encroachments into their area some point out that as a countermeasure against the resisting malto tribe the british allowed the sandals to enter the area clean the thick foliage for settlement and cultivation The period of their immigration into the area has been recorded as 1790s onwards. Slowly and steadily their population swelled. It is said that the Malto tribe felt that they were caught between the British might and the ever-growing Sandal tribe. Hence they withdrew into the hills. Only since then they were named Pahadia meaning hill dwellers the purpose of the british to allow the sandals to enter the area was not all that holy first of all the british had to face the resisting malto tribe secondly they needed revenue for the royal treasury hence they conducted survey settlements and apportioned plots of land to the locals the adivasis were accustomed to barter system for getting their provision and for various needs but the british needed land tax in cash currency and they cunningly invited money lenders and petty traders from bengal to settle in this area Soon the adivasis got caught up in the web of exploitation by the blood sucking money lenders their business comrades and unscrupulous tax collecting intermediaries when the people were unable to pay 
the ever increasing tax to the government the british auctioned off their land thus zamindari or landlord system began to flourish the money lenders also claimed their pound of flesh hence they forced the sandals to part with their cultivable land due to loan default within four decades of their settlement in the rajmahal hill range the sandals felt suffocated as if they were in a never ending tunnel of exploitation and ill treatment by the money lenders petty traders police corrupt government officials and the neglect of the administration most tribal movements have shown that a popular resistance get kicked off with the emergence of a messianic hero the sandal insurrection was no exception the heroes were four brothers of a murmu family of bugnadi village under barhit police station in the present day district of sahibganj in jharkhand eastern india they were sido kanhu chand and bhairav brothers on one moonlit night sido had a vision from god the chando baba he was told in the vision to free his tribal brethren from all forms of exploitation sido and his brothers called for a people's assembly on the determined day a large number of people assembled under a banyan tree at panchkatia 5 kilometers from bugnadi at the meeting sido shared with them the vision and the purpose of the vision the group was told by the leaders that they should proceed to the british provincial headquarters in far away calcutta some 300 kilometers to represent their grievances soon there appeared the officer in charge of biggi police station and told the people to disperse his order was responded with a counter order to treat him as enemy and have his head cut off with that bloodletting the crowd shouted hool hool meaning revolution then the crowd fanned out apparently towards calcutta on the way they broke open landlords and money lenders go downs and helped themselves with the grain and other provisions they met with stiff resistance from landlords money lenders and the police many lost their lives others moved on with the sporadic activities on november 10 1855 the british proclaimed martial law it lasted till january 3 1856 with the martial law the soldiers loyal to the british quelled the revolt sido and kanu were caught and killed of the 60000 tribals who participated in the rebellion 15000 to 20000 tribals lost their lives the tribals had only bows and arrows while the british had gunpowder it is also important to note that along with them in the fighting fray were full on jano the sisters of sido kanu brothers reports say that they entered a tent of soldiers and axed to death 21 of them some reports point out that fulos dead body was found on a railway track the events that followed the rebellion were interesting the british learned that the tribes people could not be taken for granted another uprising could be more disastrous so 
they contemplated lasting solutions. That resulted in naming the area as a new division called Santal Pragana, bifurcating Bagalpur division. Moreover, separate customary and tenancy laws were enacted. Separate courts were set up for dealing with cases. Camp courts at various market centers were organized with a subdivisional officer as the presiding jury. With the new Sandal Pragana Tenancy Act, the land owned by tribals or permanent settlers with ownership papers could not be sold, transferred or exchanged. Thus, the 1855 uprising had a salubrious effect. The June 30th memorial event of the Sandal Hul is meant to recapture the spirit of freedom from exploitation and oppression. Critics point out that today the tribe's people cannot afford to think of fighting with bows and arrows. They need to adopt a different strategy in the face of modern day situations of poverty, exploitation and lack of development. The constitutionally guaranteed fundamental right of education under Article 21A of the Indian Constitution has to be taken advantage of. It is pathetic to note that even today the educational delivery in rural areas is in doldrums. A monumental example is the state government run high school just 500 meters from the birthplace of the 1855 revolutionary leaders Sido Kanu brothers. The school is set to run on paper while the building is abandoned for cattle and cattle grazing children. The teacher's training center just about the same distance in the same vicinity is not running as of date though the building has been erected five years back. If such is the condition of the vicinity of the birthplace of the leaders of the rebellion, one wonders what progress and tribal development have taken place in all these years for this tribal dominated area. Even when strict rules are there in the Tenancy Act against land alienation, the reality is frightening. Again, the so-called development-oriented operations like business centers, quarrying and mining, etc. have displaced many people. Today, the tribal population can no more afford to think of a messianic figure coming up to save them. Rather, literacy, education, awareness, capacity development and developing ability to understand things and issues analytically and critically, honest leadership socially and politically are the tools the tribals need today for their genuine development. Thank you.